In simplifying radicals, we need to apply the laws on radicals. And in this video, I'm going to show to you how we are going to derive the commonly used laws of radicals. Let's have the first one. If A and B represent non-negative numbers, then the nth root of A times the nth root of B is equal to the nth root of AB. To observe that, from the first part, we have two factors, and then on the right side, we combine the two factors as the product of AB. So in this video, what we are going to do, we are going to start with this one, the given. And then at the end, this is our finish line. We need to come up with this. And basically, in order to do it, we are just going to apply the laws and exponents that we have discussed earlier. Just click on the card above to review the following loss on exponent. So the first one, we have the nth root of A times the nth root of B. So what we can do again is to apply the definition of a radical expression. Recall that when you have the index N or the radical expression, the nth root of A, we can transform that into A raised to the power of 1 over N in which the index becomes the denominator of the rational exponent. Similarly, when we have the nth root of b, we can transform that one into b raised to the power of 1 over n. Again, the index n becomes the denominator of the rational exponent. And then, in deriving anything in mathematics, we need to have a reason why we are allowed to do a particular step. So in this step, what we did is we used the definition of n as the index. Since the index is n, then we can rewrite the radical expression into exponential expression with a rational exponent, wherein the index becomes the denominator of a rational exponent. Okay, from this, the next thing we are going to do is apply one of the laws or one of the rules when it comes to exponent. Observe that we have a common exponent, 1 over n, 1 over n. So applying the the power of a product we can somewhat get the common exponent and rewrite it in this form instead of this we can write this in the form a b raised to the power of 1 over n and that is applying the power of a product rule wherein if we have a common exponent we can express these two factors as its product being raised to that exponent. So in this case, it is like distributive property, but we are dealing with exponents. So to be precise, that is called the power of a product rule. Then this time, when you are doing like this, you need to focus on our finish line. We need to get this one. So observe that our, finals, our final product should be a radical. A radical expression but in this case we have an exponential expression so meaning the next step is to transform this into a radical expression in this form the nth root of a b so recall that when you transform exponential to radical the denominator of the rational exponent will become the index and then the numerator will be the exponent of the radicand and you cannot see one because that is already understood so again, what we apply is the definition of 1 over n as a rational exponent or transforming from exponential to radical. And that's it. Observe that the one that we get in this part is the same with this one. And we are done. Next one. If a and b represent non-negative numbers, then the nth root of the quotient of a and b is equal to the quotient of the nth root of a and the nth root of b. Again, this is our starting point and this is supposed to be the, the finish line or the finish point. So we start with the given. The given, we have the nth root of a over b. Again, the technique is very simple. From a radical expression, we transform that into exponential by applying the definition of n as the, as the index. 
So if we have the nth root of a, b, that can be transformed into a over b, or the quotient of a and b, raised to the power of 1 over n. Again, that is basic. When we have the index as n, that will become the denominator of our rational exponent. And then next, what we are going to do, basically, if you are going to look at our end point, it is somewhat the index is being distributed to a and b. So to do that, we also need to, to distribute the exponent, or to be precise, apply the power of a quotient, meaning we distribute the power or the exponent to each of a and b. So what will happen? We will have a raised to the power of 1 over n over b raised to the power of 1 over n. So observe what happened. We just distributed the exponent to a at the same time to b. And again, to be precise, that is the power of a quotient rule. Then after that, from exponential, we go back to radical because again, our end product, it is a, a radical expression. So applying the definition of 1 over n as the rational exponent, a raised to the power of 1 over n, that will become the nth root of a. And similarly, b raised to the power of 1 over n, that will become the nth root of b. And then, that is applying the definition of 1 over n as the rational exponent. And that's it. Lastly, if a represents non-negative number, then the nth root of the nth root of a is equal to uh, the product of m, m and n root of a. So let me just explain what happened. We have two radical sign, two indexes, and then what happened? Uh, it, it become two indexes with one radical sign. So if we have two indexes, we can simply multiply the index and deal with only one radical. So that's we are, what we are going to derive. So let's start with what is given, the nth root of the nth root of a. So first, Again, the technique is just to transform this into exponential. So that will become the m, the m root of a raised to the power of 1 over n. So again, that is applying the definition of n as the index. So we can change that into exponential with our exponent as 1 over n. And then, after that, since we still have one radical sign, we still need to transform this into an exponential form. So that will become, uh, this is our radical, and then this time, since our index is m, our rational exponent will become 1 over m. So again, that is applying the definition of m as the index. So we transform this radical into this exponential form. And then, observe that what we have now, we have a power being raised to another power. So if you did not forget what we discussed in my previous videos, we can apply the the power of a power. Meaning, if we have a power expression, then we have an exponent being raised to another exponent. We can just simply multiply the exponent. So that's 1 over n times 1 over m. So I will show to you what will happen. We multiply 1 over n times 1 over m. Recall that in multiplying fraction, just multiply the numerators, also multiply the denominator. So if we have 1 times 1, that is equal to 1. n times n is equal to nm. And then you look at our final, final product. The index is mn, but what we have here is nm. So since we are multiplying and these are numbers, we can apply the the commutative property of numbers over multiplication. So if we have n times n, we can rewrite that one as m times n. So meaning if we have 3 times 4, that is equal to 4 times 3 because 3 times 4 equals 12, 4 times 3 is equal to 12. So why I'm doing this extra step? Because we are going to meet our final product, which is mn. So we write a raised to the power of 1 over mn. And then 
that is applying the power of a power. Again, a power raised to another power, just multiply their exponents and then you will get the, the answer. And then from exponential form, we need to transform this to radical to get this one. So applying the definition of a rational exponent, 1 over mn, we can rewrite this into um, the m times n root of a. So the denominator becomes the index, and then our radicand is a, and that's it. So what I presented to you are the properties of radical that are very useful in the succeeding topics. So I hope you will not forget any of the following rules because it will be very useful. So if you find this video useful, then hit the like button and then share it to your grade 9 friends. And do not forget to comment down below so that I can feel your presence. Thank you.